stampers. I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable easel calendar that you can send as a card. And what a great gift to get in the mail with a little bit of effort. I just love these. I'll also have a printable PDF file available so you can print out this calendar and cut it up yourself. So let's get started and I'll show you what I used and how I made this. First I'm going to be using the beautiful bouquet stamp set. This comes with 37 different images. It also has a matching set of framelits that we're going to be using. And then I chose the circles out of the stitched framelits with the squares, ovals, and four circles. You get four of each here. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you our cardstock layers. I've got crumb cake at four and a quarter by eleven, another piece at four by four. I've got two pieces of soft sky that are four by five and a quarter, a piece of whisper white that is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth, and this piece of crumb cake is going to go behind our calendar. So that's going to be two and three quarters by two. And then I've got some scraps, Whisper White, Pear Pizzazz, and Powder Pink for our die cutting. I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer here and do our scoring first. Our card base is gonna be scored at five and a half. The four by four piece of crumb cake is going to be scored at a half an inch. I always like to do my smaller scores going this way so I can keep my cardstock straight. Then we're going to score at two inches and three and a half. And this is what's going to make our accordion for our easel calendar card. And we're going to fold it just like that. I'm going to burnish all these edges right away. This part is pretty much ready to be put together. I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the tab here. And I'm going to put that down at the very bottom of my base. And you may notice that this is smaller than the card base itself. It's not as wide. I did that on purpose because I didn't want it sticking out the sides once the card was put together. So this way you don't have it sticking out any place. And it certainly doesn't hurt anything for our easel. This is the way our card is going to stand up. It's perfect. It keeps it upright. You know, sometimes when we make tall cards, after a while they kind of lose their oomph and fall. So this will keep this together. I'm going to take my soft sky layer and I've got the Pinewood Planks Dynamic Embossing Folder. And I'm going to put my soft sky layer in here and I'm going to run this through my Big Shot. Now remember when you're using these really thick dynamic folders, you use your base plate and then one cutting pad on top. Not one under and one on top, but just one on top. And run these always through your Big Shot with your seam going through the machine first. If you're running them through with your seam going through last, it causes undue stress on the seam and you'll find after a period of time, your embossing folders, were, they'll start to crack on that edge. So there's a little tip for you. Here is our layer and isn't that just beautiful? And the thought of um, a wood grain background on soft sky is a little different, I think, and that's why I chose it. I'm going to adhere this with some liquid glue. This card really does go together quickly and it depends on what you want to do with it. I chose um, a bouquet of flowers which is a little more involved but you could simply stamp some images and add those and that would be of course less involved. So I have my, this is the background, the back part of my card, which I chose to stamp up because when I mail this out, I'm going to send it to a friend 
and I'll be able to write on the back of it. And my friend will be able to have that on their desk the whole time. I'm using second generation Pear Pizzazz ink here. So I've inked it up and stamped it off once. And then I'm just going to stamp this right on my Whisper White layer. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Stamp it right here. And then I'm going to bring in this image with all these adorable flowers on it and stamp that right over with the first generation inking. Isn't that pretty? Next I'm bringing in some Memento Black ink. And I love this little image. I love the fonts on these words. Thanks a bunch because we're going to put a bunch of flowers on the front. So I think that's just a little play on words for this card. This layer is going to get adhered to the other four by five and a quarter inch soft sky layer. And I think that's looks a lot prettier than just adding a layer of white to the back. It depends on how fancy you want to get, I guess, but I just thought it would tie to the front of the card better, be pretty. So we have the back of our easel calendar card done. Let me show you what I did with my die cutting. So I've got the stitched shape circle. I stamped up my words, I couldn't have picked a better friend than you. I die cut that and then with this little flower image and the powder pink ink, I stamped some flowers right on the edge of it. I love to do that with my words, add a little bit of some stamped images to them because it makes them look so much nicer than just a stamped image. Then I've got two of these green sprigs. I've got the greenery for our bouquet here. This is going to hold our bouquet together and I die cut that, I stamped that in crumb cake. And then this little flower image, I've cut out two white and two powder pink. This image, I've got one white and two powder pink and we're gonna do a little bit of work with these white ones to make them blue. Got my soft sky ink here, and I'm just going to sponge the edges of these. I didn't want the same color as my background for these blue flowers, so I thought if I just cut them out in white and added a little of the same color, that would make my flowers come together nicely, and I think it worked. <laughs> okay, there we go, a little bit of blue. I've left a little bit of white in there. And now I'm going to come back in with my all of my flowers because I want to make them look dazzling. So I'm adding some clear Wink of Stella to the flowers. And this is just one of those one of those neat little embellishments that you can do that doesn't take much time, but it really gives your card that wow factor. And it does make my flowers shimmer. They're so pretty with this on it. And it's easy. Easy counts too, right? Okay, I think we're good. Now I'm going to show you how I put my bouquet together. We've got our main stems here. Some little embellishing stems and this little holder for a bouquet of flowers. I'm gonna bring in my silicone mat. This is fabulous for gluing things. Whoever designed these were crafting geniuses. I'm just gonna put some liquid glue on a paper plate and I've got a sponge with a clip on it. This is how I like to glue these little delicate things because then you don't have glue oozing out the back. And I just chose to put my flowers down in kind of a ran random pattern here, alternating the different designs. And layer them, layering them over top of each other. Now you wanna make sure that you don't Lay your flowers back down in um, on your silicone mat where you've already put some glue because they'll stick. 
<laughs> we don't want that at this point. I think I'm going to need to add a little bit more glue here. I'm always being frugal with that. But you can always put more out. And it, it does dry pretty fast, so you don't want to waste a lot of it. I just do a little bit at a time. Make sure those are sticking to your stems. And then we've got just two more left here. This makes quick order of making these bouquets. Sometimes I look at these stamp sets and I think, oh, that's going to be so putsy. But not when you use the right tools and take into consideration all these little tips that we can do to make it easier. Let's put that right there. And there is my bouquet. Last but not least here, I shouldn't say last but not least, we've got a ways to go. I'm going to add my little green sprigs. I'm going to put some glue on those. I'm going to just put them right down in here. There we go. This little piece, I'm going to add some glue directly to it. It's a little bigger. I don't need to use the sponge there. Move this stuff out of the way. And then I've got a piece of and I've got a piece of our linen thread that is 15 inches long, and I'm going to leave just enough of it hanging off the end to tie a nice bow. And I wrap this around a bunch of times. So however many times you can wrap that around. I think it's five or six. And I just wrapped it around here, and I thought this would be a pretty embellishment for my card. We're going to tie that in a bow. Tighten that up just a little bit here. And I always like to curl the ends of my Baker's Twine or Linen Thread. And you do it just like you're curling ribbon. Isn't that neat? Gives it that little curl. Because sometimes they just don't lay right. And they make me a little crazy. So here we go. I'm going to bring my easel card in and then I'm just going to apply some glue to the back here and put that right up here in the corner. And I do have mine going off of this soft sky layer just a little bit. I think that adds a lot of interest to your cards when you have um, die cut images you can do that with. This one, some dimensionals to the back. Stick your fingernail in the middle of these. It pushes the edges up and allows you to get the backing off a little easier. There's another great tip. All these things you learn when you've been doing this for a while, right? I'm going to put that right here. I just love that saying. I couldn't have picked a better friend than you. And then to our calendar. Here's the printout that's available. You can click on this and download it on your computer and print it out. What I did is I put this in my paper cutter and I cut two and a quarter inches is perfect for each line of months. And then each little calendar is two and a half inches long. So that's how I cut it out. You're going to stack them up just like this and grab a stapler and staple them. And then we have this little piece. I'm going to glue my calendar to it so I have a nice background. Make sure I've got that straight on here. And then I just glued this to my card front. 
move my linen thread out of the way here. I covered up the bottom part of my bouquet. And there we go. Isn't that just adorable? Now this is gonna sit on somebody's desk or in their kitchen. And when you send this to them as a thank you card, or you could use happy birthday here, they're gonna have this all year long and be reminded of you and your talent in stamping. It is a fabulous way to thank somebody with a little handmade gift. I've got a lot of other great ideas that I'm sharing on my website, www.estampabove.com. Thanks so much for joining me today. Bye-bye.